Welcome back to episode 20 of Off the Wall Podcast. I'm your host, Bobby, joined by Matt Mellows. Time difference, in, in, time difference in California threw everything off, I guess, with Mellow. So he'll be here eventually, we hope. But yep. opening day is tomorrow. It is Wednesday night, one day, less than 24 hours away from opening day. We're ready yes, for baseball. It's no doubt. Here. Yes, I am incredibly psyched. Even though the Phillies aren't playing tomorrow, which really kind of sucks for me. Neither but, are the Yankees. Yeah, I saw that. But yeah, it, that's, yeah, it's still, it sucks, but it's still fun because you're going to get to see Major League Baseball. That actually counts being played. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I can't wait. I'm so excited. I know. I can't wait to just watch a random game tomorrow. Yes, definitely. But I don't um, know when the first game starts, but I'll probably be in school and I'll probably pull it up on my laptop. And Brewers Cubs is the first game tomorrow at two twenty, Eastern time. All right, all right. I'll be in school for a little bit still. Guardians Royals, Pirates Cardinals, Mets Nationals, Reds Braves, Astros Angels, Padres D backs, and oh Mariners Twins. It's already postponed as well. So two <laughs> games already postponed for tomorrow. Northeast is getting killed in with rain. So who knows if the Nationals and Mets will play tomorrow. But whatever. There, someone will play baseball. I don't know who. Guaranteed. West Coast <laughs> never rains there. So. Of course. Yeah, whatever. Don't tell them. I don't want to pick up the <laughs> West Coast. But um, yeah, anyway. So opening day tomorrow. But we do have some news earlier today, Wednesday. Jose Ramirez is staying with the Cleveland Guardians, despite rumors of him being traded to the Blue Jays, Padres, I don't even know. But at yeah. least for now, he's staying in Cleveland. Interesting move, to say the least. The fact that they spent less than a million dollars in free agency and then signed this guy to 124, something like yeah. that, 125. Whatever it ended up being, a five-year deal, I believe. I think the Guardians got a steal, in my opinion. They they got a steal. Got this got this guy locked up for another five years. He's been an MVP candidate the past like three or four seasons and just turned just turning 30, I believe. So Yeah, I was wondering got, how old he was. Yeah. Okay. This guy's still got a lot of good years in him, no doubt. And it's just a little puzzling that they didn't spend any money in free agency. I don't know, but yeah. So last year he finished in sixth in MVP. 2020 he finished in second. 2018 he finished in third, and 2017 he finished in third. So, yeah. I mean, he's probably. I've been saying this for a while in different videos and stuff, but I think he's the most underrated, underappreciated player in the league. Really, he's one of the best third basemen year after year. He just produces. He does everything. Switch hitter does everything right, and the Indians did get a steal with that. They somehow found a way to not spend a lot of money again by signing one of the best players. Yeah, I know. It's oh, that's crazy. But did I say the Indians? You probably did, but <laughs> it's the first year. We're all we all get a pass to accidentally say it because they've been <laughs> they were the Indians for however many probably a hundred years or Our something. lifetimes, yeah. Exactly. So that's yeah. all we ever know. <laughs> but yeah, Guardians. anyway. <laughs> whatever indians guardians i don't care cleveland baseball team cleveland, cleveland baseball team. <laughs> but um <laughs> yeah anyway we discuss the guardians and we don't see them doing anything special this year anyway. yeah. but at least guardians fans are keeping jose ramirez yeah it gives them something to look forward to be excited about so yeah so today as our final hurrah before opening day we got to squeeze in the nl central and the nl west previews yeah. into one episode we've been doing all the other divisions separately we're squeezing both into here i guess we'll start with the nl central yeah it, i mean it shouldn't be a, too much of a problem there's not a whole lot to talk about in the nl central but yeah. when we get to the nl west it'll be interesting to see how long we take on that but <laughs> We'll just dive right into it here. So we want to start yeah. at the bottom or the top? Bottom. 
Okay, bottom. I think there's a weird, weirdly, there are some, I mean, I guess you could say this for every team, but the NL Central, since we're talking about it now, I think every team has something to look forward to. I would agree with that. Even the Pirates, I mean. Yes, they, they do. A lot of, a couple of young stars, so. Yeah, I think they have a lot to look forward to. Not this, not winning-wise, but like player talent wise like it'll be exciting for pirates fans. definitely to see growth in uh Brian hayes and o'neill cruz's debut and he's I a mean, Coulter, all around fun player so brian reynolds too brian reynolds as long as they don't trade him but if they do whatever return they can get for him so yeah so, but yeah so okay let's dive into the pirates a, a little bit more but bit. I mean, shallow dive <laughs> yeah but those players that we just talked about O'Neill Cruz specifically he's not starting opening day on the major league roster which is strictly uh, service, time. service time but with the new CBA I forget if it's if you win rookie of the year if you finish top three something like I forget exactly what it is but if you finish top three or top five whatever you gain a year of service time no matter what oh I'm pretty sure. So interesting. So he could go out there whenever he comes up in May or whatever it is. His six, isn't he like six foot seven playing shortstop? Yeah. He's a yeah, freak. He's going to be very fun to watch. So that's going to be good for Pirates fans on that side of the infield. Yeah, definitely. That side of the infield. I mean, I'm just curious if they ever, if he ever makes the move to outfield or transition from shortstop at all I don't know what all their prospects look like necessarily but it just doesn't seem right having a six or seven guy at yeah. shortstop but hey I guess if it's where he played and maybe hit a huge growth spurt but I don't know yeah I don't know either but I don't know it's gonna be fun to see for them um who else really on the pirates Over under. oh oh okay. yeah yeah you Over know what under. that's it 65 and a half for the Pirates. Under. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm going to say under too. But it's just, they'll be fun. They will have their moments, just like we said with a couple other, like the Royals, like you said with the Royals, good young players that will have, bring fun moments to us. But Yeah. And they always got a very nice baseball park. So Oh, yes. That's what they have going for them. I think... <laughs> My favorite park that I've been to, I think you've said that too, right? Yeah, PNC was great. Yeah, I would like to go back there. But anyway, hey, um, yeah, anyway. Next <laughs> up, let's go with Reds. the team. Yeah. Yeah. The team that got rid of everyone this offseason, except for Joey Votto and Jonathan. Joey Votto. Out here making crazy TikToks now. Oh, my God. That. We don't have time to dive into those, but – this man, it seems like he just discovered the internet and just discovered TikTok, and he's going crazy. But Joey Votto is like the dad, your friend's dad, that thinks he's funny and trying to make videos on the internet and yeah. trying to go viral. Good for him. You know what? He's at this point of his career. The Reds got rid of everyone. He knows he's um, like one of the best players of this generation. Like he's, he's just chilling Joey. right now. He's at the end of his career. Good for Joey Votto. Yeah, it, it is good for him. The only thing that's not good for him is being on an organization that evidently doesn't really want to win. And yeah. it's a tough situation for him. He probably feels like he can play meaningful baseball still, yeah. but he probably wants to play it. He probably wants to play for the Reds, but he wants to play meaningful baseball. So, right. Of course. It's kind of conflicting for him. Yeah, that sucks. But yeah, I mean, the Reds still have uh, Luis Castillo. They traded away Sonny Gray, Jesse Winker, uh, Amir Garrett. Do you have yeah, Suarez. Garrett. Yeah, I, I think mean, we... playing playing right to Joey Votto's right is Jonathan India, Rookie of the Year. So that's exciting, but yeah. kind of not the right time frame for for them to have a guy win Rookie of the Year and then trade away all the good players, but. I digress because we could talk forever about yeah, that. Yeah, because 
The Reds in 2021, what was their record? They won... 84. They won 83 games last year. Ooh, okay. So, I mean, that's a good team. They're over 500. I mean... Barely, a, but... Yeah, but, like, it's not like they sucked last year and they are like, oh, we're throwing this out. Like, they yeah. had an opportunity to win and they, they're not even going for it in a week relative... No, in a week, NL Central. It is weak. The Cardinals yeah. on a powerhouse. The Brewers are halfway Pitching. there with the yes. pitching. Yeah, so, I mean, it just doesn't make any sense to trade away Winker and Suarez and Garrett and all and everyone players. else. Yeah, so the over-under for total wins, 74 and a half. So right around exactly what they did. Oh, no, never mind. I'm sorry. 10 to 11, nine games less than last year. Yeah. I'm going to go under. I'll take the over just because 74 seems a little low. And it, like we said, it is a weaker division. Yeah. The fact that they were above 500 last year, the drop a whole 10, 10 plus games. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I don't know exactly who's going to be filling the shoes of Winker, Suarez, Garrett, et cetera, everybody that traded away, and who else they even do trade away at the deadline. So right. it's, it's hard to tell, but I, I think they can maybe make the under India rookie of the year carry the team, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we had talked about when we were going over the uh, AL Central, I think we were talking about the Twins and Tigers about teams. Obviously, Mello thinks that the Twins are going to make a push. But those are teams that are looking for starting pitching. And if those teams are contending come the trade deadline, they're going to go out and try for Luis Castillo or Mike Mike Miner, who's like a relatively good veteran guy, like yeah. expendable piece for the Reds, I should say. Yeah, for sure. He's like the average, your typical trade deadline move, like right. trying to get a veteran starter. And Castillo has been in trade rumors for the past, like, two trade deadlines so yeah it, he's bound to get moved public. at some point yeah because they don't want to sign him and they want to get something for him before he leaves in free agency so exactly yeah. so yeah this team could completely fall for part or they can stay in it that's another guy i'm sorry i just saw hunter green hunter green yeah i mean he's that's another guy He's probably top five, I think, I saw in NL Rookie of the Year odds. Yeah, so, I think so, too. I mean, if they could have back-to-back Rookie of the Years, but they just traded away all the good pieces. Yeah, so, I don't know. Yeah. <sighs> Enough of the Reds, though. Okay. This next team, I'm excited for. I think it'll be a fun team. The Chicago Cubs. Yes, yeah. I am very excited for the Chicago Cubs. This is – it's interesting because they moved off of every, like, cornerstone player of right. their franchise. Javi, Rizzo, Bryant, all gone. Mm-hmm. And brought in Seiya Suzuki, Marcus Stroman. Uh, obviously, Frank Schwindel had a great year last year. And just – it's going to be – it's going to be a fun team, like we said. So, yeah. I'm not and, sure how good they're going to be. Okay. Clint Frazier, Clint now coming Frazier. from a Yankee fan, <laughs> I am saying that Clint Frazier will hit 25 home runs this year. 25. I think Clint Frazier is going to excel in Chicago. I mean, he was supposed to be one of, like, a, a good the prospect. Guy. Yeah. The Yankees were supposed to trade Garrett, like, Back when Garrett Cole was on the Pirates, they were they had asked for Clint Frazier. The Yankees said no, and like mm-hmm. they held they held on to him so for so long when they didn't have a spot for him, and yeah. they kind of I don't want to say they have ruined, but the Yankees are known for prospect hugging, and this is the guy who he's now twenty six years old, twenty six, twenty seven, something like that. So it feels like he's been around forever, but. He'll finally get an opportunity, and I really, really do think that he's going to excel in Chicago. Well, yeah, the pressure lifted off him will be huge, I think. 
I think new scenery does a lot for a player. Okay. Clint Frazier will be the Cubs all-star in the all-star game. He will represent the Cubs in the all-star game. Uh, he's going to have to play really good to get those votes, I feel like, just because he's kind of a polarizing every player. team needs Every team needs a, a, a representative. It depends what Stroman does, I feel like. Yeah, that's true. Stroman I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. Suzuki. Say Suzuki. Oh, yeah. It depends. That's what I was going to say, too. But I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. It, it's a possibility. It's not totally anything totally nuts. So Yeah. And they have a Nick uh, Madrigal, uh, Madrigal yeah. too. Yeah. He, he was hurt him. last year, right? Yeah, I think so. Play. They got him in the Kimbrel trade, right? Yeah. So, 75 and a half. I'm going to go over. <laughs> I'm on yeah. the Cubs. I'm on the Cubs train. Yeah, we really kind of just hyped him up there for a second. <laughs> yeah. They're, it's so – it's going to be close. But I think 75 and a half, I think they can do that. All I, I Like 77, and you're still looking at that, and you're like, that's still a not – amazing team but it's enough to get 77 and 85 that's not bad i i will lock the cubs i i would feel very confident in betting okay they're gonna sit comfortably comfortably in third they're not gonna make a push for second but they won't be in fourth i think probably not yeah yeah um yeah so then the two leaders of the NL Central or next. Who do you want to hit next? I think if we're going in order of who we think's finishing where, Cardinals would make sense to me. Okay. Now. Right. So I mean, they got the names there. Goldie, Arenado, um, Tyler O'Neill. It's just I'm not sure. Starting pitching is a little bit of a question for me. They I think have, Jack uh, Flaherty's hurt, right? Flaherty's hurt. He is hurt this season. Yes. Yeah. Wainwright's up in age. I mean, he hasn't necessarily shown us a huge reason to not trust him. But any time, obviously, when a pitcher's getting older, like, is he even is he forty yet? No, I think Wayno? he's thirty, not thirty-eight, thirty-nine. Okay, I believe. Yeah. Either way, I mean, sure, unless 40. he until he gives reason to is he forty. Yes, he turns okay. 41 in August. Jeez. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's old for Major League Baseball, but I mean, unless he gives you a reason to not trust him, you're going to have to go off of his previous track record, which is a really good pitcher. So, yeah. And he did pitch very, very well last year. He pitched, he, yeah. he was 17 and 7 with a 3.05 ERA and 32 starts. What 40-year-old pitcher is giving you 32 starts? What pitcher is giving you 32 starts nowadays? Never mind a 40-year-old. Just over three ERA. Like, yeah. wow. No one but gets I don't you, know. I'd, oh, yeah. 200 innings last year. I don't year. know about two. Wow. That's like he, a, that's a pretty good milestone. He was third in year. Major League Baseball in innings. Pitched At last year. 40 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty crazy. That's but, nuts. I mean, realistically, I don't think he's going to replicate that. But um, who knows? Maybe he will. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. I'm trying to think uh, of conditions they make, but – other than Pujols, which is not really a huge addition. No, it's just a – it'll get fans in the stands. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you see that Jordan Hicks will be in the rotation to start the season? I did not see that. Yeah. Pretty mm-hmm. crazy. But, um, okay. Yeah. I, this team can win that division, I think. I think they can definitely win the division. Yeah, their ceiling is winning the division. Right. But their floor is second place still, I think. Yeah. So they're kind of trapped there because I don't yeah. think they're good enough to win the division, but it's not, it's definitely not impossible. So, right. yeah. Um, I mean, I'm throwing this out there. We had already made, we have already made our um, 
World Series picks, but how cool would it be if the Cardinals made it to the World Series and Yachty, Wainwrights, and Pujols the last Pujols year? Last year. That would be awesome. And here he is, ladies and gentlemen. Mello, welcome. You're looking spiffy, dude. Hello, hello. Thank you very much. Yes. It's a new season. We're, very excited. We're talking about how the St. Louis Cardinals, if they were to pull off a Cinderella storybook ending. It's not going to happen. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right. I said that no, I prefaced it. I'm on savage mode right now. With I that prefaced it. Never- yeah, I prefaced guys- it with it wasn't going to happen, but... Did you guys see the tie? Cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. For the uh, listener, Melo has a Dodgers tie on, but and looking great in a suit. Thank you very much. But anyway, yep. yeah, we went over the four teams in the NL Central. Kind of not much. Else. You have anything to say about Pirates, Cubs, Cardinals, or Reds? Anything Pir- quick? Pirates will be no good. I think the Cubs will be better than everybody expects. That's what we said, too. Yeah. Um, what was the other team you said? Reds. Reds. We already talked about them. Waste of a franchise. Sold half of their team. <laughs> and then um, Cardinals. I don't know. I saw their over-under on that. I don't know why. That's too high. For it was Reds. like 74 or something like that. Yeah, for the Reds. Yeah. It's too high. That's it over. But anyway. Hmm. <laughs> We don't need to revisit the Reds. Can everybody? Yeah. Uh, Cardinals. Any any uh, closing thoughts on the Cardinals? Can they win div- the division? I can see that. Yeah. I don't I think, think it's impossible, but yeah, no, I don't think so at all. I think it's like it'll be close between the Brewers and Cardinals, but ultimately, I think we all agree that the Milwaukee Brewers will win the NL Central. So let's dive into them. Wait one sec. Eighty-four and a half over on oh. for the Cardinals. No, I'm oh, over. Over. Not by much, but over 87, 88, yeah. I would yeah. say. But then moving on to the Brewers, this pitching rotation is ridiculous. Corbin Burns, Brandon Woodruff, Freddie Peralta, the bullpen, obviously, Josh, backed by Josh Hader. Offense is the only issue. I thought they were going to add a huge bat, but they really didn't. I thought Luke Hoyt would be perfect in with the Brewers, but uh, he didn't end up there. Christian Yelich, hopefully he comes back to his form yeah back to mvp form for yelly would be awesome but it's just been it's kind of been hard to watch him after he was at the mvp form and then his fall it was i mean obviously it wasn't quite cody bellinger level but it was still uh it was a little bit sad to see because he had such it was i liked watching christian yelich as he's my uh, favorite player on brewers fan really really Yes, unfortunately, yes. No, he really is. But yeah, yeah he's a fun player. He do need him to get get back to where he was. Yeah, it sucks for a guy like me who's left-handed. Um, we hate to see lefties go on a slump like this, but um, I I think he's gonna have a bounce back to 2022. I really do hope so. They brought in Andrew McCutcheon. I mean, Philly's- how was it? Matt? How was he last year? For he any was- Brewers fans. How- from a Phillies fan perspective, he was reliable. I, from what I felt, he was always a guy that you felt was getting, or you saw was getting you big hits in big moments. From what I remember, and he chipped in. I want to guess maybe if somebody pulls up his baseball reference, twenty home runs last year. Twenty-seven. Okay, there you go. Twenty-seven home runs from how old? Thirty-three, maybe year year old Andrew McCutcheon. Thirty-five. Wow. Thirty-five. Okay. Wow. So. 27 home runs. He batted maybe 240. Just 222. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, 222. <laughs> but still, 27 home runs from Andrew McCutcheon. He's a, he's a solid bat. So, I mean, maybe that's part helping part of their offensive issue. But it's not yeah. solving the whole thing. Yeah, he still played in 144 games last year at his age. You really don't see that, especially at guys that age. He'll probably be their DH. But, I mean – I like the Brewers a lot, and I think, yeah. The only thing that's holding it back is their lack of offense from making – when we were making our World Series picks early, not earlier in the episode, but 
uh, off of uh, off of recording, we were saying that the one thing holding the Brewers back is their offense. Just if they would have added that one piece, it would have made the difference. But, yeah, but Brewers eighty nine and a half. Mm. Yeah, take the. No, go over, man. Yeah, Barely. I say over. Barely. I say yeah, ninety one, ninety two. Ninety-two, but yeah. Uh, imagine oh. having a great starting rotation like that, and then you can't do your offense. Can't do anything. Yeah, that sucks. Basically. Don't know how that feels. <laughs> yes, I'm just kidding. Yes, I do a hundred times. <laughs> it's like how Jacob Degrom feels every time he goes out. Yeah, whenever he picks up a ball, whenever he doesn't yeah. get hurt. Yeah, I was gonna make that joke. But I, oh, okay. I thought that was mean. Sorry, but it's okay. Eh. It's all right. At least Max Scherzer will start on. Oh, Never mind. He's, He's not, not starting there. opening day either. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, all right, let's move on to the NL West. Are right, we starting? I came in right in time. Dodgers yes. win the division. End of end of episode. All right, there we go. I like no, that. I'm just kidding. That is very <laughs> correct. Diamondbacks. Thanks for the free wins. Cattell Marco. Okay, yeah. How about that? Yeah, Ketel Marte, they signed the extension, keeping him, even though they're trading, thing, uh, trading him, whatever. Other than that, they really don't have anything. Carson Kelly got in the plate. Zach Allen. Um, trying to think of anyone else notable. But um, I don't know. Not really much to look. But Melo, like you just said, those three – teams at the top of the NL West need to take advantage of the Diamondbacks. Yep. Because I saw it with the Yankees last year with the Orioles. They did not, and that's why they didn't that's why like they didn't do good in their division compared to the other teams. That's why they the need Giants to take advantage had, of those three wins. That's why the Giants had such a good season last year is because they won a lot of late inning games and then they were able to take care of teams like the Rockies, Diamondbacks, Diamondbacks. Yeah. And then um, they were able to stay afloat with teams like the Padres and Dodgers. So. Exactly. Yeah, that's what you need to do. You need to take advantage of the shitty teams, like pound on them. And then, yeah. But other than Diamondback, I mean, Diamondbacks, nothing really else to say. What's the over under there? 67 and a half. Mm, that's one of the tough ones. Give me the under. Yeah. Under losses for the Diamondbacks. Uh, last year, the Diamondbacks went fifty-two and one ten. Wow. So why? That so is, why would they? Is... Why would they win fifteen or sixteen more games? I just don't see it happening. I think they'll win sixty-ish, but still hundred losses. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, an interesting move by this team this year: Rockies bringing in Chris Bryant for. Good amount of money. Yeah. Um, they traded away uh Ramil Tap Tapia Tapia to the Blue Jays. Tapia, yeah. yeah. I, th- I always forget how to say his name. So. They traded him they to lost the Blue Jays. John Gray was John that a trade? Was that free agency? free agency? Okay. I th- I think it um, is. They still have Herman Marquez. But I mean, this yeah. is a te- another team who's not going to win. Chris Bryant strictly went there. Probably either because he loves Colorado or um, he wanted the money. Probably, maybe some both. Yeah, maybe that. Maybe he <laughs> likes to participate in extracurricular activities in Colorado. That's but, all you um, smell over there, by the way. <laughs> never been. The minute, would, the, minute like you, the minute you step through into that state, that's all you smell. I'm not joking <laughs> when I say that. There's a cannabis store every mile, every two miles. Jeez. That's it would the be first a nice place to go. I would like to visit yeah. Colorado one day. I would too. To... But you know what? Maybe we'll go there next year too on our tour. That oh. people might. Oh. Uh. The... Oh. <laughs> Never mind. But yeah. We're coming to your so... city. Yes. We're like college game day. We're coming. But other than Chris Bryant, Ryan McMahon, he's a fun player. Yes. I Charlie... like him. He reminds me of Reese Hoskins, except from the left side. Of the plate, power, not necessarily hitting for average, and like your run of the mill first baseman. Unless he might be a little better defensively than. Yeah, I was uh, gonna Reece say, Austin. didn't he win? 
Did uh, he win a defensive award? Gold Glove? I thought he did win a Gold Glove. No, he didn't. I lied. I don't Charlie, know. Either way, he's he's a solid player. He put up a four-war season last year. That's very impressive. Yeah. But Charlie Blackman's... Carried the team, so. yeah, Charlie ahead. Blackman's still around? He's still doing I, I know I know Chris Bryant signed for a bunch of money and he's gonna be there for a while, but Charlie Blackman's kind of your franchise guy right now. Yes. Because he's been there for a while, yeah. He's been there since yeah. 20 years. Aeronaut- yeah, Aaron Otto's gone, story's gone. That's that's all the cargo. Wanna go that far? Cargo. <laughs> Wanna go that far man. back? Ubaldo Jimenez. Cargo. Oh <laughs> man. <laughs> but I mean, other than that, I don't know. Rocky Thanks for the free city owner. Yes, exactly. Another team that needs to take advantage of that. CJ so, Crone. He, yes, he had a very good year last year. Yes, he did. He can uh, hit 500 foot moonshots. He can. Off Dodgers pitcher. Mm. Other than that, let's move on. Where do we go? Mello, you pick. Save the Dodgers for last. Yeah. Uh, cool. You know what? Let's go to the Bay. San okay. Francisco. Okay, so I feel like some teams are completely counting them out. And then other teams or other people are saying that they're going to like be very good again. And I haven't seen like the middle ground. I think that's going to be one of you two. I don't think they're very good. I think I'm the middle ground. I mean, they're. They had a magical run last year. Nobody saw 107 wins coming. Nobody. And if they did the lot, if they said they did the lying, yeah. they lost Buster Posey, who hit 300 last year. Yeah, then he hit 300 last quits. year. <laughs> he, yeah, exactly. Quits. Well, not quits. Retires. He yeah. didn't quit. But Called it. Don't quits. Put it like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they lost Gossman to the Blue Jays. Brought in Rodon. Interesting. I mean, I don't know. There was something his, I think it was his spin rate declined a lot last year in the second half of the season. Um, I'm not trying to deep, deep dive too much on the Giants or Carlos Ron, but I don't know. Brandon Crawford had a really good season last year too. It seemed like things clicked a little too well to happen again this year, but you have to respect a division winner a little bit. So, <laughs> you don't have to. You don't have to. I mean, I basically agree with you. What you said. I still think they're a good baseball team. They're definitely a good baseball team. And Melo, I think it would be unfair to say they're otherwise. I just don't. They're not going to win the division again. They're not going to win a hundred games again. They're not going to win remotely close to one hundred and seven but they will be a good baseball team. I have an interesting question. Quick, yes or no, or one team or the other. Who wins more games this year, Phillies or Giants? Phillies. Um, That's probably me being a Giants hater, but. I think it might be Giants, but not by much. It's, it's going to be close. I think it's close. But one team's getting a lot more. Uh, I feel like one team's getting hyped up a lot more than the other, but Correct. it might be. I think That's true. Really- my only reasoning for it is because the NL East is much tougher where the Giants can take advantage of the Rockies and Diamondbacks. I mean, the Phillies have the Nationals and Marlins too, but I don't know. I just feel like it's more competitive there. Yeah. Anyway, that but, was awesome. I don't know. I think that's a – yeah. I don't think that that's a bad question. I want to show the Giants – if you want to get some Giants love out of me, which is very rare, so take it for what it's worth. I did say in the predictions that Joey Bart was going to win Rookie of the Year for the National Oh, League. you gave it away. No. Oh, was I? No. Oh, I was no, saying, no, no, wait no, a minute. It's <laughs> I did say that. Yes, you did. You did but say it, it. Yeah, but it's just I was watching a lot of these Giants games, especially in the second half of the year when we were, like, chasing them. And I was scoreboard watching in, like, July. But – um. Right. These, these guys had a lot of late-inning magic. A lot of games they won coming back in the 7th, 8th, and ninth inning. I just don't see it happening again. I'm not even – this is not even me being a Dodgers fan and hating San Francisco. I just – I don't think they're going to do that again. Yeah. I mean, 
realistically. It would. Brandon Crawford's like 100 years old. He's not going to. People are saying he could be in the MVP running this year. Shout out Brandon Crawford, though. He did have a great year last year. And I do. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've always liked Brandon Crawford. Brandon Crawford. Do you not – is that a player that you don't like being a Dodgers fan? Or do, or yeah. do you like him? You don't like po- him? Yeah, Posey was under that list, too, for the longest time. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But um, Giants, 86 and a half. Should cut his hair, honestly. Oh, no, come on. That's one of the best ha- best hair in baseball. One of them. Uh, hope one of the Dodgers steps on it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going <laughs> to go that far. I'm not going to go that far. 86 and a half. Hmm. <sighs> I'll take the over. Give me I'll take the, the slight over. I'll take the under, yeah. but they don't miss it by much. Yeah, I think. 84, I think 85. That, yeah, I think that's fair. I would say I 88. That, yeah, I would say 88. Mm. Uh, but That's what I was going to say. But, yeah, anyway. Next uh, team. One, one, one last thing, one last thing. The Dodgers did beat the Giants in the very first postseason series, so suck on that. <laughs> that was a great series. Yes, if no, it wasn't very stressful. Yeah. <laughs> Next team, San Diego Padres. Slam Ooh. Diego. Slam Diego. The team that fell off the face of the earth last year. The meltdown of all meltdowns. A very disappointing year for the Padres last year. I enjoyed every minute of it. Of course. Ah. Mello, are you scared of a fully healthy San Diego Padres team? Are you worried about a fully healthy San Diego Padres team? I am. I'll be honest. I, w- I was afraid of them last year, to be honest with you. I really was. What the Giants did is what I thought San Diego was going to do. That's I fair. really thought it was going to be like that. And then Tatis got hurt, and then... These guys are fighting in the dugout. Well, good thing you're not – good thing you're worried about a fully healthy – I am. Again, they're not going to be healthy. Again, Tatis is going to start off the year on the IL after his little accident. Accident. <laughs> Quotation marks. What did you do? What did you do? Who did you – how would you call a hit on Fernando Tatis? <laughs> <laughs> I know people. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no. Matt, what do you think? I I don't think like they're a threat to the Dodgers, really. They're more like a third-place team to me because even if you go around position to position between the Dodgers and the Padres, I think the Dodgers haven't beat everywhere. First, you got Freeman, way better than Hosmer. Second, you probably have Muncie. Do you have Muncie playing second or yes. is he DHing? So Muncie okay. can play second or DH. Well, for my uh, sake, uh, sake of my example, Muncy at second, him and Cronenworth probably mm-hmm. close. Close. I'd take Muncy personally, but See. shortstop Tatis healthy versus Trey Turner. It's it depends close. what you like him. It's a toss up. Depends what you like him. Yeah. Say toss Padres up. Padres probably fair. have third base. Okay. Yeah. Toss up too. Padres have third base just because Turner's getting old. But Chai yeah. is better. Catcher, clearly. Dodgers rotation if totally healthy it's close yeah no it, it is close. it is it is it is yes it is it definitely especially it's with 100% Trevor Bauer with the Dodgers um outfield way the Dodgers no question Dodgers have zero and outfield exactly so in my opinion they're not that close they're more of a rival to the Giants to get to try to get second place than they are to the Dodgers, in my opinion. But that's fair. I think the Padres should have second place locked up. I agree. They should. They should, yeah. But if who knows? Last year, everyone should be second guessing Padres now. This is going to be should fa- have second base place locked up. This is going to be fantastic if the Dodgers go out there and cruise to another divisional, a division win, and then the Giants and the uh, Padres are beating each other up for second place. Yeah. For a wild card spot or something. So Padres yeah. at 89 and a half? Is that yeah. it? 89 yeah. and a half for the Padres. Well, where did they finish last year? 
seventy. Were they even up? No, they were not over five hundred. No, they weren't. They were seventy. Oh, then I just had it up. Sorry, I was looking at something else. They were at seventy nine and eighty three. Under. I'm gonna go under too. Cause Tatis is not coming back till what June? No, I don't think that long. No, I think right? I, I think I heard May. May. Yeah, I think I May, think it's May. only like a month. Okay. Not if I have something to say about it. I guess under. I think it's gonna be very close. Man. All right, I'm gonna go under too. And I think they have second place locked up. I do too. Hmm. Okay, I don't want to say locked I up, but I'm. I would say that they're finishing in second. I disagree right. with that, but we'll see. Time. We'll move on to the Dodgers. Dodgers. Okay. Realistically, Melo, I'll let you have a couple minutes. Definitely. The dot. We went over this multiple times, so I don't. We're not letting you go on. The Dodgers need to win the World Series. At the very least, they need to make it to the World Series. Or Dave Roberts guaranteed it. He tripled down on it. This team is one of the best teams we've seen in a very long time, really. Um, yeah, they need to win the World Series. And everyone knows that they're on paper the best team in baseball, and they need to back it up. Ladies and gentlemen, General Mello here. We're back for another season. Your... Los Angeles Dodgers are going for their eighth World Series championship in franchise history. Um, I mean, there's really nothing else for me to say. We have the team. We have the fan base. We have the manager, believe it or not, um, to go out there and win a championship. But it's just going to come down to can this team just stay healthy, in my opinion. Yep. Because... As far as I know, they're not gonna be they're not gonna have to be worried about anybody in this division unless the Giants have another magical year or the Padres play up to where they're where we think they could be at. But this is a team of destiny in my opinion. I, and I, I agree, agree with that. I this agree is the that. team of destiny right here. This is other than the 2017 team that won 104 games and got to game seven of the World Series and got cheated out of one, this is the best team on paper. But For sure. Um, yeah, exactly. They should win. But we'll see. They're all, the Dodgers always make it difficult, and there'll be some BS that comes along the way. But hopefully we'll be out on top in the end. It rarely ever happens in baseball where the best team wins. Well, it's going to happen this year. No, I would say. Know. Yeah. Sure. Matt, last minute, Matt, couple thing. Matt, one thought on the Dodgers, and we're giving our World Series picks, and we're sending you guys off for the 2020 MLB, 2022 MLB season. 2020? Yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> Dodgers Matt, are definitely in the division, and a World Series, not a, not a World Series appearance would be disappointing, like you said, Bobby. So, I mean – all they had to do is go out there, stay healthy, and win. Trevor yep. Bauer could be icing on the cake. Cherry on the icing on the cake. Okay. Now, it is time to reveal our World Series picks. I'll go first. Yankees, the World uh... Series matchups. <laughs> Coming out of the American League will be the Toronto Blue Jays. Boston Reds. Oh. Versus the reigning World Series champion, Atlanta Braves. And the 2022 World Series champion will be the Atlanta Braves in seven games. Boo. I'm not happy about it. I'm not <laughs> happy about it either. I'm not happy. But that's... I'm sure you have your reasoning and I, I can't dispute, dispute it because obviously they're the reigning World Series champions. So um, I, I'll go next unless we're defending our cases a lot. I don't know. I don't think we're going to defend them right now. No, okay. I think these we're are just picks. 
So, so winning the American League, probably facing the Astros or White Sox, just because obviously five years in a row in Houston. But anyway, the Blue Jays winning the American League, representing the AL. On the National League side, Mellow's Los Angeles Dodgers bringing it all home. The title 2022 World Series champion, the Toronto Blue Jays in six games. The championship's going to lie across the border. I'm sorry, Mello. I really just dissed your team um, and you right right while we're recording here. I have my tie on. I know. You disrespected a man with a Dodgers tie on. I know. Hey, I gave – they got there at least. Um, but Blue Jays, Blue Jays are taking it home. And I know this is kind of a Nets-Lakers, and both of them are – the Lakers are out of the playoffs. Yeah, or thanks. The playoffs. And the Man, Nets are uh, – I haven't heard that 100 like, times already today. To play, in, play in tournament. So hopefully that doesn't end up being that pick. But I don't think it will be because – okay. Mello, take the stage. Let's go. Coming out of the American League. You guys said the Toronto Blue Jays. I know they're struggling with injuries right now, and I did say that the Twins were going to be in first place oh, at the beginning. No, 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 no. I'm not going to take it. I'm not going to take it that far. I'm not going to take it that far. I know the Minnesota. I know I said the Twins would be in first place at the first week of September, but I still think this is going to be the better team, the Chicago White Sox. And coming out of the National League. Just say it. Yeah. Oh, they will go out there and win their 25th National League pennant. And they will go out there and win their 8th World Series championship. Your Los Angeles Dodgers. They win it in six. In front of 56,000 people at Dodger Stadium. And I got to tell you right now, Los Angeles will be on fire after that. And I'll be in the middle of it somewhere. And there's that, our World Series predictions. Let's see what happens. Cheers <laughs> to opening day. It's my finally year. Finally here. 2022 MLB season is finally here. That's going to be great. Looking forward to it. Let's do it. All right. Catch you guys next week for a recap of opening day. Peace out. See ya. See ya.